Sean Payne is somebody that did retire. Today he retired. He told the Saints and he held a press conference, a very touching press conference that basically credited the Saints for being a great organization, the people in it, the players that helped them become a great coach, and et cetera. Gail Benson, before he retired, said, who knows? We'll find out soon enough, I guess. I don't think any of us know, but he'll let us know soon enough. And that was very soon. He said he talked to Drew Brees on the phone last night about it. And Sean Payne is out. So I guess the question is, what's next for the Saints? Sean Payne, excellent head coach. He, I mean, you can't take anything away from what he's accomplished. Super Bowl champion after the Saints went through Katrina, 152-89 and 89 record, 9-8 and eight playoff record, has had four or five 12-win seasons. He's been a coach of the year. This guy is as good as it gets when we talk about head coaches, resumes, NFL, top guys. Where do the Saints go from here? The Saints are in a really tough spot. Sean Payton retiring is almost like you screw up a Madden rebuild and you just quit the franchise and delete it, right? <laughs> because like th- this team is an absolute mess right now. They they have a good defense, right? It's it's respectable. It's one it's top 10ish. I don't think they're elite and it's hard to be in this NFL to have your quarterbacks be Trevor Simeon, Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston. I don't blame Sean Payton for being, you know what? I'm 58 years old. I I gave my all to this team and to this city. I'm going to call it quits. So he's having, he's had a Hall of Fame career. I do think he's going to be back coaching. I think he takes a year off, maybe goes into broadcasting for a year, be a great broadcaster. And I think two spots that really stand out to me is Dallas and Miami. I think those would be two really good places for him. I believe he's coached in Dallas before. I want to say Miami too, but I'm not sure. But what what's next for the Saints it's time to blow everything up. They have a bunch of veterans that I'm sure they would like to get off their hands. Michael Thomas, they could be trading. It wouldn't surprise me if Alvin Kamara goes. Marcus Williams is a free agent. Tyron Armstead's a free agent. So they're in a position right now, while they don't have any cap, they can make moves and just say, you know what, let's blow it all up because they're clearly not talented, talented enough to compete with the top teams in the, a- in the NFC. Although the NFC is the weaker conference of the two, the Bucks are far ahead of him. If Brady does leave, that division becomes the worst division in the NFL. But when you look at this team, the offense is just absolutely decimated. Sean Payton is an offensive guy, and I'm not sure if he has the final say or if it's Mickey Loomis or whoever. I'm sure they collaboratively you know, work on these things. But you look at the receivers over the last few years, They've drafted three total wide receivers since 2015. That's seven draft classes worth. And wide receiver is the deepest, it seems like, almost every year. You have a bunch of receivers. 2016, MT in round two, a home run. But then 2018, you draft Traquan Smith in round three, who's a nice player, but he's nothing special. He showed promise, but you're 2021, right. Kwan Baker, round seven. He had more tackles than receptions this year. I don't think we're going to be counting on him <laughs> nah, anytime soon. He's a seventh-round pick, though. Come on. I know, but regardless, you, you love to talk about how Joe Douglas doesn't hit on his late-round picks. Oh. He's had two drafts. Okay, okay. What Just, was his late round pick in 2020? Uh, Bryce Hall. Round five. Seventh round. We're talking about seventh round. You mentioned me a seventh round receiver. I'm just saying he has three. No, but you not, have in the past said that six. Seventh saying, round versus fifth round is different, though. I'm just, it bear, it not much. I'm sure if you look at the hit rate between fifth round picks and seventh round picks, I bet you it's not that different. It might be like three percentage points. We're talking about a 60, 60 pick difference. We're talking about guys going... 180 versus 230. All right, we don't need a huge debate on this one. Come on, can we agree? We don't need it. But the Saints have failed to put the Saints have failed to put resources into the wide receiver position, which is why they're in the position they are now. They're negative 71 million in cap. They'll make it work like they did last year, but they're in a rough situation. If you're a Saints fan, you've had a hell of a run these last 10, 15 years. Drew Brees came in, you know, and he had a couple good years in San Diego, but when he came to the Saints, Sean Payton really elevated him. He's a phenomenal offensive coach. But it's time for the Saints to blow everything up, trade your veteran guys, get some draft picks, and start from scratch. They're in cap hell still. And I think Sean Payne understands that the Saints are not trending in the direction that I'm sure that he wants to at this point in his career. It would take a lot for them to overcome the situation that they're in right now. Their championship window has closed. And it's been clo- it's going to be closed for a while. And their strongest chance to go to the Super Bowl and, and potentially win the Super Bowl was the year that they got screwed against the Rams, where it should have been pass interference and it was an obvious missed call. And I feel like that was their best team overall and the best chance for them to win the Super Bowl. Because that that Patriots team, as great as that that defense was, it was beatable. It was possible. It's 9-3 Super Bowl game. And 
the Saints and, and the Rams both were solid teams, but I think the Saints were overall a better team than the Rams at the time. I think that the Rams were just fortunate in that situation. And unfortunately, things didn't turn their way, and now they've been in a huge drought ever since. I think Sean Payton probably, as you mentioned, probably will return in football at some time. I just think that he needed to get out of, out of New Orleans. And New Orleans is headed towards a rebuild that is going to take a few years. We saw back in the day when Archie Manning was the quarterback that they were a, a poverty franchise. Sean Payton came in, Drew Brees came in, and they completely changed the culture. As you mentioned, what they meant to the city of, of New Orleans when Katrina hit, they were everything. They're probably the best fan base that there is. There is no worse place to play than in New Orleans. There's no one that wants to go into to New Orleans and play the Saints because that, that environment is just different. Those fans are different. They love the Saints. But it's time, it was time for Sean Payton to go. And I think that once he comes back, he'll join a team that puts him in a better situation to win because at this point in his life, he needs a championship. He wants another championship. And I think he acknowledges the fact that the Saints are not going to be in that position anytime soon. He left $45 million on the table by leaving the Saints. I'm not sure if the Saints will pay him or not. Probably will. They're a very respectable franchise that kind of do, real, do real right quick, by the guys. They own his rights. So if he does want to come back, I believe a team would have to trade for him. Well, that would help out the Saints a lot. Dennis Allen might be the coach. They're talking about Aaron Glenn. Dennis Trading Allen. Trading for coaches is so funny, man. Dennis Allen or Aaron Glenn. I'd probably prefer Aaron Glenn, but either or. The Saints are going to be really bad for a couple of seasons. It's more than the quarterback position. Even a great quarterback wouldn't succeed in this situation given the playmakers they have on the outside. Michael Thomas is their best one, and he's such a question mark that he might not even be on the team next season. The other receivers... Didn't step up in the way we thought they'd step up. Like specifically talking about Marquez Callaway, they need to invest in that position. This team still has a great defense. They still have a pretty good offensive line. If they can get a stable quarterback, maybe they can stay afloat. But that's the hardest position to find in the NFL. Jameis Winston, maybe he comes back, maybe he doesn't. Taysom Hill is not a good quarterback. He's average at best. I'd say below average. Trevor Simeon is bad. The Saints are going to be bad for a while. But this run that they've enjoyed with Sean Payne as, as coach has been phenomenal. Sean Payne ranks first in points and yards at 27.6 points per game and 391.2 yards per game among all team coach combos that have been with the team for five or more seasons. He has four 11 win seasons. He's with Bill Belichick, Don Shula, and Tom Landry when speaking about wins. And I just think Sean Payne just had enough. He started four quarterbacks in 2021. Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, Simeon, and Ian Book. The Saints don't have any cap space. They have no playmakers on offense. And yeah, every year we see the Saints do something magical with their cap. But we're at a point now where it's going to come back to haunt them. And even though they just break even towards the end, they can't sign anybody of notice that's going to drastically help this team. When you look at the last couple of years for Sean Pan, it's just been too much for any guy to handle. You lose to the Vikings on a Minnesota miracle play. You lose to the Rams on a pass interference call that should have been called. Because of that call, you essentially lose the game. Then the very next year, Kirk Cousins, of all quarterbacks, eliminates you from the playoffs. And yes, he's a good quarterback, but he has a track record of not performing in those moments. And then this year, the turmoil they've had to go through. They didn't even play for in New Orleans for the entirety of the season. They had to play some games in Jacksonville or in Florida. I'm sorry, can you say Kirk Cousins? You're talking about this year or the Minneapolis Miracle? No, he lost to Kirk Cousins. No, I'll, I'll wait. This year you're saying? or No, last year. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Or no, 29 to 20, 2019. I'm sorry, because the Minneapolis Miracle was Case Keenum. That's what I That was 2017. Yep. I apologize, Ken. Go ahead. And this past year, what he had to go through with all the COVID stuff, mm -hmm. New Orleans not even having a, a practice facility because they had to be on the move all the time. Yeah. Sean Payne is old. He just got tired of it. And the Saints right now aren't heading in a very good direction. Like you mentioned, this is a rebuild. This is 
for years on end, the Saints restructured contracts and put money on the back end to give Drew Brees and Sean Payton a bigger window to win games and to win a championship. And that all right now is coming back to haunt them. And I don't think Mickey Loomis this time around is going to pull off some wizardry to where they can get a, a standout player. It's going to have to happen through the draft. Yeah, agreed. And this draft, there isn't a quarterback I think that Sean Payne has probably looked at and said, this guy can just save us outright. I don't think he sees that. And that's why I thought this was a great decision by Sean Payne. He's done enough for the game. He's done enough for the league. He's one of the greatest offensive minds to ever coach in NFL history. He revolutionized the NFL in terms of his passing schemes. And I think it, it's it's just due. I think this was a great time for him to retire, be with his family. Maybe he comes back to football. Maybe he doesn't. We'll see what happens later on down the line.